Hello and welcome to our Haskell Day preview show brought to you by Monmouth Bets. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital. Very happy to be here with you and an esteemed panel. We'll start with the man in the pink jacket as he so often likes to sport that that uh, bet maker's pink. He is my co-host really for this show. The man with all the betting news. He is Dallas Baker. Dallas, how are things? Peter, hello. Lovely, mate. Great to be back online with you. It's been a while since we've done something together, but this is a really good Haskell and it's a really good race day. Won't hold everybody up. Looking forward to getting into it. We've got some great stuff coming up and a great team which you're about to introduce. Indeed. We will start with uh, a woman whose work you've heard on our In the Money Airwaves. She's an Eclipse Award winner and a fantastic analyst currently working for uh, World Horse Racing. She's Naomi Tucker. Naomi, what's going on? Oh, good. Be joined Eclipse Award winner with you, might I add. <laughs> <laughs> quite the honor, quite the honor. I was actually going to comment on some of people's backgrounds because Dallas has got a great background. But Pete, you're you're taking the cake there with the surfboard in the yeah, back. Does that, does that get any use or? <laughs> Don't ask me to get out on it. Just a nice, nice decoration we have here. Naomi doing double duty today. Not only going to be giving her thoughts on the form, but also had a chance to talk to some of the key players in the Haskell itself. We'll, we'll be getting those tidbits in uh, starting very soon. But first, must introduce a man whose work you know from InTheMoneyPodcast.com, uh, from behind the microphone at Sam Houston, one of the most respected handicappers, form analysts, whatever you want to call him, in the business. He's Nick Tamaro. Nick, what's going on? I'm doing great. You know, I don't have a salmon jacket or a surfboard or any <laughs> anything really to offer uh, other than my opinion, which everybody's probably disappointed with by this point anyway. So it's all I've got. We mentioned the fine work Naomi has done in the run up to this talking to key connections. None more key than a man uh, just intricately associated with the Haskell at this point. That's Bob Baffert. She starts off asking Bob uh, to what prompted him to give Arabian Nights some time off before coming to this Haskell run. Well, actually, we had um, we had um, transferred him to a Tim Yak team, and he had him there. And I I think he had like a maybe a foot issue going, so uh, they just stopped on him. I got him back, and I said, "Well, we'll just wait." And, you know. Uh, you know, he was running out of time, so we just freshened him up and thought we were trying to hopefully try to make uh, the Preakness, but uh, the timing just wasn't right. So uh, so I always had like the Haskell in the back of my mind that this is uh, uh, this would be the right spot for a horse like that. And, um, you know, he's the kind of horse that, you know, I like to give him extra time between races. He's um, he's uh, I, I think he's. You know, we'll find out this week. It's a really competitive field. I was just looking at it and go, wow, it's a, this is a good field. Yeah, you're up against the Kentucky Derby winner as well. So not an easy task to come back to, right? Well, it's, you know, it's an all-star cast, horses, jockeys, and trainers. I mean, you've got uh, Richard Mandela, Cox, Atchison, um, uh, Todd Pletcher, and uh and myself and some you know you got the homeboys are always you know they're always tough and so uh it's you know you got tap to trice he, on paper he looks really strong and i it's one of, it's the kind of race that they have to bring their a game and so um it's it's going to be probably one of, the mo one of the most competitive house schools you know i've been in you know and so um uh so it's going to be uh i'm i'm really excited about it you know the horse shipped well uh, Jimmy Barnes is with him, uh, who goes there, and he says everything's gone smoothly so far. And, uh, you know, you need luck, and um, and he needs to break well. He's still a young horse, you know, two outs, that's it. And, you know, he's going to get some seasoned horses. And uh, an extra extra Anejo, he was like, you know, an all-star horse when he broke his maiden, like he was. So he's coming off the big, big – he's going to be really tough. So it's uh, – it, it's 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 going to be a tough race. Well, you mentioned in his preparation that perhaps the Preakness was coming up too soon. What have you kind of seen from him now returning to action that made you think he's ready to go? Well, I mean, the way he's been breezing, he's probably been ready for a couple of weeks now, you know, waiting for it. And um, but uh, it's um, I, I, you know, I think fitness wise, I think he's ready for it. Um, 
I, he's a kind of horse that, you know, there's really good horses, you know, you can just get them ready. You can just do so much with them. And then they're, uh, they're, you know, their class will get them the rest of the way. So I think it's going to be a good test for him. And, um, you know, he's on the outside. Uh, so, you know, he needs to break well, you know, at least he'll be in the clear if he, you know, breaks well. And so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, we really don't know, you know, he's been gone to the front because he's so fast, you know, so it's, so Johnny, uh, Velasquez, he knows the horse pretty well. So, um, We'll see how it, you know, it shapes up early. Great stuff there from uh, Bob and Naomi. We're going to be getting into some more uh, interviews regarding this Haskell Day. But first, we have a message from Monmouth Bets. Monmouth Bets is New Jersey's exclusive home for fixed odds betting on horse racing, including this weekend's bumper Haskell Day card. But it's not just Monmouth Park races you can place fixed odds bets. Tracks are available from the US and international venues. Download the Monmouth Bets app now and receive a free $50 bet once you verify. Fixed odds betting. The odds you bet are the odds you get. Available in New Jersey only. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Monmouth Bets. The only place to bet online fixed odds horse racing in the US. We're excited about the Haskell. We're also very excited about our Betmakers uh, Bonanza, which the winner of the Haskell, Travers, the Warriors Cup Classic, if one horse wins all three, there's a million dollar bonus. Betmakers has been good enough to put up. We're excited about the Betmakers partnership with Fixed Odds. Fixed Odds has the potential for huge growth in the handle in this country. And we're happy to partner with Betmakers here at Monmouth Park, as well as on our Monmouth Bets app. Good to hear from Dennis Drazen, such an important uh, figure in really the sports betting and fixed odds landscapes. I wanted to ask you a question, Dallas, before we proceed, because betmakers uh, for whom you work and are who, who are really helping um, launch the fixed odds movement in the USA, uh, do this really interesting promotional thing, the betmakers bonanza. What can you tell us about that, Dallas? Well, it's in it's what we started in the year to uh, 2020 when Authentic did win the Bonanza, a slightly different Bonanza of what it is. So basically what we put up is a million dollars for any horse that can go on to win as it stands now. Uh, the Haskell, the Travers, and then onto the Breeders' Cup. Um, pretty easy to do. You can just, you know, come and walk outside and just turn around and do that any day of the week. I mean, obviously, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's also a million dollars. So, look, I mean, I think we've seen a couple of horses that have come, or a couple of extra horses that have come to the Haskell, and one or two extra horses make such a difference to races like this. So, um, yeah, we've got a fantastic partnership with Dennis Drazen and all the team at Monmouth. That's been pretty much where we started our... Uh, our major business in the US and, you know, anything that we can do with, to support and work in unison with them, uh, especially doing a Haskell Day, a Haskell, a Haskell Day preview. Uh, we're more than more than happy to and are always excited to do so. We will be back with an interview with one of our other key Haskell players right after this. Monmouth Park's featured event is the TVG.com Haskell Stakes Saturday, July 22nd. Watch and wager as the country's top three-year-olds converge on the Jersey Shore, looking to enhance their championship credentials. Play our $400,000 guaranteed late pick four and $200,000 late pick five. First post, 12 noon. It's all TVG.com Haskell Day, Saturday, July 22nd at Monmouth Park Racetrack. It's all about the efficient trip. I don't think he's a horse that's very complicated and needing to be somewhere to be effective. He can take dirt. He's comfortable on the lead. You know, it's just about an efficient trip so that when he finds his rhythm and gets in a, in a good in a good rhythm, he can uh, he can make his move. I went into the decision to go to the high school instead of, for example, perhaps go to Saratoga for a prep there. That is, of course, if the Travers is still uh, the goal later in this season. Yeah, you know, um, Monmouth Park has always been a, a, a forwardly place, uh, a favoriting track, and so is Gulfstream Park. Uh, they're both, both services have some similarities. And uh, the turns at Monmouth, um, are a little similar to the third but training center where we're at uh at the moment so mm -hmm. it was a track that we felt he'd have 
uh, more familiarity with, or at least be uh, have a less period of adjust of adjustment to than going to Saratoga, which is a demanding track. Uh, we were not able to ship. You know, we're not just dealing with mage. We have obviously a couple barns of several stakes horses, mm -hmm. and uh, for them, you know, with some commitments in Kentucky, we weren't able to ship them as a group to Saratoga earlier to get him more experience over the Saratoga track. So we felt it was just more uh, made more sense to come off the layoff after the Preakness at home, which is a thoroughbred training center and to start getting him going from the thoroughbred training center. And being that the Haskell falls, falls five weeks before the, um, the Travers, it made the most sense to, to pick this race. We're focused on, carrying the mantle of being the Kentucky Derby winner. Mm -hmm. And that means running in, in the big races. So, so as long as Mage shows us that he's ready to do it. Um, could we, we would have loved to have had five workouts instead of the three that he's put in, but you know, weather and what weather and other circumstances didn't, you know, prevented us from, from, from getting that. So like for ourselves, it's just about getting, getting the ball rolling. You know what I mean? Like the Haskell, Many great horses have won the Haskell and many great horses have lost the Haskell and run second and run third and gone on to have an amazing year. And that's our mentality. Just perform well, put in a quality effort and keep it moving. Look, he's sound 100% ready to run. Is he cranked to the gills like he was before the Kentucky Derby? Just mathematically, anyone who can look at workouts can see that and know that that's not possible. Now, if people aren't educated as horse people to understand fitness and training regimens and, and training programs, well then hopefully this gives them a little insight to understand like that kind of development for a racehorse when they're coming off a layoff and with the limited amount of work that you're able to put in. It's just, you know, some people don't know what that means. So hopefully this gives them a little clarity and perspective. He's 100% healthy. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, fit to put forth a quality effort and and move forward from this race. Great stuff there from Ramiro Restrepo and Naomi Ramiro, a real student of the game. Want to remind you that today's show is brought to you by Monmouth Bets. You can find them at monmouthbets.com. Your opportunity to bet fixed odds, not just on Monmouth, but on an array of tracks across the country and get your fixed odds bets loaded there anytime you're in the state of new jersey dallas how's it been going on the monmouth bet side yeah, it's great Pete. we're just gradually getting more and more content in week by week uh pen national was a new uh newcomer this week um so that was welcome on pen that's great and we've been taking some good bets on them but uh, and of course you can also obviously download the apps on whether you are an apple user or a android user whatever the case is you can download uh the app which most people these days prefer to do too pete but uh Sign up bonuses there for you if you're in a new account opener. Just go to, as you said, Monmouth Bets or go to your app or Android store and go from there. Just to set the table before we get to the race that gives the day its name, we are going to hear from uh, that man, Bob Baffert, again, going for his 10th Haskell. We're going to hear what he thinks makes this race so special. Monmouth Park, it's not a prep for anything. It's a real race, okay? Okay, it's the Haskell, and it's a great one. It's a million dollar, and it's supposed. It's like, it's like, um, like in golf. It's a major, okay, and uh, and that's what the Haskell is. So we're looking forward to it. They've been great interviews, Naomi. I've had the unenviable task of actually having to edit them down, and uh, there's some great stuff. And I'm pretty sure that they're on. Um, if you want to see the full interviews uh, at the uh, Monmouth Park YouTube channel, they should be on. Great interviews, but Naomi, uh, the, from the both uh, the both obviously superstar gentleman that you spoke to, there was a bit of a theme that I took from it that um, one was indicating horses from in mage first up, you know, like will improve. Whereas Bob Baffert was saying no, that, and with that quote he just said, no, it's the Haskell, it's a golf major. He's, he was ready two weeks ago. What was, uh, you, with you doing those interviews, was that a sort of a take that you took from them? Well, that's quite interesting, isn't it? One person saying, look, it's a prep race. We're looking at the Travers. We're using the Haskell as a step up because it suited us better. Whereas about Bafford is it going, this was the goal all along. This horse was ready to fire three weeks ago. We are here to win our 10th Haskell. So from a betting point of view, if you are looking at this field, you might want to take that into account. That Arabian Night is five 
is firing on all four cylinders and Mage is still developing and continuing in that kind of upward trajectory. Now, thing is though, you start looking at the formula, but Mage is the Kentucky Derby winner. So it's really tough to really pinpoint what you want to do with that. I mean, clearly Bob Baffert has a tremendous record in this race. So if he says he's ready to win it, kind of got to take his word for it, right? Absolutely. Nick, I want to I ask you what you think as a horse player when you hear quotes from Ramiro, from uh, from the trainer, and they're both, they're almost building in that excuse before. So <laughs> I don't know if it's to reduce expectations, if it's to help in the Eclipse campaign, whatever it is. But as a horse player, <laughs> you, do you take that seriously or do you think they're just, you know, sort of the old college football thing, godding up the opponent just in case they lose? H half and half. Yeah. <laughs> we try to sort of listen in between the lines, if you know yes. what I mean. Because I've spoken to so many trainers of, over the years that just taking their word for it, they don't always know either, right? It's the uh -huh. horse racing. Anything can happen. So do I completely adjust my betting strategy for it? N no. No, I don't. No, I do look at just what's on paper, what I've seen and what I'm thinking. Now, does that mean I might be wrong? Sure, but I'd rather be wrong than taking someone else's word and then they're wrong, I'd rather blame it on myself, so. Well, and I, think, and I think that's the whole part of it. And I know we, we're running behind time, but I think that's the whole thing is that, you know, you've got, we've got great people on this panel that can provide wonderful information, but it's how you decipher it. And I think it should, it should always come back to your own work and your own decisions. You know, you, okay, well, what do you want to hear from that trainer? The trainer says, I think the horse will win. Well, will be will. Great. You know, everyone does. But how, you know, I, I thought that having two extra works as, as opposed to one was critical. Did it get those two works? Is that what I was looking for from the trainer as well too? What are you actually looking for out of it rather than just the fluff? And as Naomi said, read, read between the lines. Anyway, sorry. Nick, Nick, what do you make of Mage in general and this uh, debate we're having about the, the readiness situation? I mean, at risk of sounding overly harsh or flippant, um, I just assume every time I hear a trainer talk, they're lying. Because I just don't see what I just don't see what benefit they Big have. To to I, I, I mean, they don't have they don't get much out of telling the truth. So, I mean, in this scenario, Ramiro's setting himself up beautifully, and of course, he's a mutual friend of ours for maybe a, a Miami mayoral run because it's like the perfect political statement, right? If the horse wins, it's oh my god, he won and he wasn't even great, and if he loses, it's oh gosh, he lost because it was a prep. So, you know, I, I don't I don't think that I mean, I'm being cheeky, but I don't think they put the saddle on him without thinking he could win. Um, but I also understand that the Travers is the race that they covet. I have a hard time believing he's he's anything less than 100 percent. I think he's probably pretty darn close to it, if not. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing the showdown. And I think the, the banter beforehand is a lot of fun. And I'm glad that we were able to get so much of it captured by Naomi. Arabian Knight. Let's talk about his credential speed figure wise this is the horse to beat experience wise you can argue he's got something to find um Naomi we'll bring you back in where do you ultimately land on Arabian Nights chances in this year's Haskell I went back and forth quite quite a bit in this race because I was like I either go all the way with Arabian Night you know everyone's hyping him up to be that star three-year-old on the west coast or I'm going to go, you know what, let everyone put their money on him. I'm going to hope that this is a little bit out of his league. He's still, you know, he's still developing. He hasn't really faced what some of the others have faced yet. And I'm going to go against him. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going against the Arabian Knight. <laughs> all right. All yeah. right. We'll get, to your, yeah. we'll get to your verdict as the well, conversation Okay. Goes well, on. I mean, I, I suppose the debate is generally is how good are the three-year-olds? Um, you know, and I, and I I always feel like as the Australian coming in here, if I criticize the three-year-olds, it's all about you know how dare you sort of thing but are the three-year-olds any good this year let's just be like nick nick just was very brutally honest let's be brutally honest are they any good nick we'll, we'll, we'll let you answer that one first uh not particularly um they're they're okay you know they're they're probably a little bit better than than uh than okay not much more than that i mean speed figure wise they're a you know they're a ragtag bunch there there's really been nobody that stepped forward. But, you know, I would have answered the same way a year ago. And yet by the end of the year, Epicenter and yep. Taba had really stood out as the two best three-year-olds by far. So because a lot of these campaigns don't necessarily uh, really accelerate until the second half of the year, especially for a, a horse like a Bob Baffert trainee, where we've seen him do this so many times, this could be a totally different conversation in three months. But as of right now, they're, a, you know, they're a barely above average group. 
They're a slow group in general, speed figure wise. But I mean, you know, Naomi said that Arabian Nights making his third start, right? Archangelo has run four times. Mage is still is still very lightly raced. So these are horses that could all end up taking a pretty clear step forward. And and I think we could that we could be maybe singing a slightly different tune in, in yeah. the future. Uh, and I, I think, think the, implicit, the, implicit in Dallas's question is the idea that you know the more average you think they are the more you're going to be excited about Arabian Night based on what he's yeah. shown. Am I right with that? Uh, that was exactly what I was going to say, Mr. Fornital. Yes. <laughs> but does that mean you, you – so, so in your view, do you think this is an Arabian Night uh, – Moral, uh, special, <laughs> certainty, <laughs> wins by six. Really? Yeah. <laughs> look, I, I went through all the tapes last night and had a look at it. Mage won the derby, getting the right run at 15 to 1. Tap it uh, – um, Oh, top, yeah, getting my tapas confused. Um, it was you know always or in the mar market, sort of had a bad run, but whatever. It's sort of all be, always been there. About I, I just got less and less impressed by looking through the classics, and then I just saw Arabian Nine, and I just saw in that last uh, little that last furlong or sort of a part where it just showed that probably four strides, a real big acceleration where it bang, bang, bang. I thought, okay, that might be something there. So, yeah, I mean, I might be over the top moral declaring it a certainty or whatever, but yeah. may as well make some noise. But I just think different form. Um, I really like what Bob Baffert said. And and I've got to, I'll have got i go back to last year when Tiber was there. Um, I remember interviewing Bob about it as well too. And he, um, at that time, he sort of indicated that Tiber was a one probably a week or two early for it. So it's not like he's yes. come in and just been, you know, you know, building it up. But because this time last year, he said it wasn't ready. So, yeah. or wasn't as ready as it should be, or he would have no. liked it. So, so from what I heard from Naomi's interviews and all that, yeah, I'm I'm a Arabian Knight for sure. And and what we'll do, we on another show, we used to do a how to speak Australian segment. We'll 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 go to that here. Moral is basically their version of mortal lock. I think is the yeah is the proper, yeah, yeah. Uh, US number, uh, number US in the frame. Don't even worry about it. Race is over. Just just <laughs> just don't lose your ticket. That's the only thing you got to worry about. <laughs> Tapa Trice, who Dallas mentioned, another key player in here um, looking at this market and a horse I feel like we have to discuss. I feel like he has shown greenness in every race, and I feel like it's one of these things you can read it either way. Maybe you just don't want to deal with a horse that doesn't see that seems physically incapable of running uh, behind another horse. Or maybe you say, if this guy grows up, as Tapit horses often do, maybe he could take a step forward. Are you buying the case for Tapit Trice, Naomi, in the Haskell? I'm buying it to try and create value. Is that a really like horse players kind of terminology that I'm using here? I'm buying it because what I'm doing is trying to create value against Arabian Knight going to receive oh. a fair bit of money. Now, I did see Tappet Trice um, in the flesh at the Belmont as well as the Bluegrass. Belmont, of course, going that mile and a half. We're now cutting uh, back again to, I think, a distance that it's fine for him as well, that mile and the knee. I love this bluegrass run. I actually thought he was very strong there at that last bit against verifying the two going head to head. I thought it was pretty professional there. So I wouldn't put it past him to show up and to do well enough. Is he my pick to win? No. Do I use him underneath because I want to create value? That That's what I'm doing with him. You know, yeah. and you, my Pete, can I just add in there too? Yeah, like, there's, there's no real specific lead up to the Haskell, but obviously, you know, the Derby and, and the main races are. The amount of times that I've watched a feature race, like a grand final or something like that, and you walk away and go, oh, yeah, of course, the favourite in the lead up. It might have got beaten or whatever, but it has come out. Then it's you've let it go around at twelve to one in the race before it was two to one. It comes up and you look at it and go, yeah, of course, the favourite in the lead up. It's um so yeah, I think with Tapatrice, that's where he gets really, really good marks. Is that he's been close enough to the top of the market in all of those races. Nick, there's a couple of interesting mid prices in here we haven't talked about yet in the form of extra on Yeho and uh, Go Rocket Ride, even a uh, salute the stars in the betting. What do you think of of any of their chances? Well, um, well, I mean, look, I'm going to need to be resuscitated if Tappet Trice wins this race. I mean, I will be absolutely <laughs> stunned. This is just so not his his game. Um, this is a horse also that came back and worked twice, missed a work, had a work. 
then ended up going here. It feels like a total afterthought to me. I think he's kind of a takeout killer at three to one. I think salute the stars of that trio is the most interesting. And, and I know he's going to need to improve again. He ran a heck of a race in the Pegasus, the, the baby Pegasus, so to speak, in, in breaking poorly, getting into some early trouble. You know, Kings Barnes had as soft a trip as you could possibly have. And he wore him down very nicely. Now, this is a huge jumping class. But I, I like that Brad Cox is sticking with the, you know, with what he's doing, um, being a, running this horse back at Monmouth. He ran well there. Joel's a good fit. Joel is going to just take this horse back and basically bank on somebody pushing Arabian Night. And if nobody does, then Joel's going to ride for second. And so this is to me, if you're looking about the exacta and you don't like Mage, you're kind of you're kind of one punching the eight three here. Um, I, I think that Extra Añejo is a good horse. I don't really love the idea of him at a mile and an eighth in a race where he's probably going to have to chase Arabian Night for the first half mile or so. I just don't think that's a big recipe for success for him. Go Rocket Ride drew poorly. Otherwise, if a talented horse does have the ability to sit just a little bit off the pace. One win for Richard Mandela east of the Mississippi in the last five years. I know he doesn't do it much, but, you know, just not not really his comfort zone shipping outside of California. We're going to get to our verdicts on the Haskell, and we've got some more great content for you coming up. But first, I think we should take a look at this uh, speed map for the, the Haskell. Dallas, you seem like the one with the absolutely strongest opinion here. Does the, the How does the, the pace map back up your idea? Yeah, I mean, you look, you know, I mean, you, you don't want a horse to be bustled. I mean, I think over anything when you're getting out to beyond a mile, you definitely just want to be able to be jump I like just like horses to be able to jump and flop so you know whether they're a leader or not whatever it is just get comfortable early uh the outside draw from the leader there's a long enough run to the straight so I'm I, I yeah like if um the inside something in the inside wants to kick up you know don't be silly just sit outside lead um I think I, I think Arabian Knight can do that I, I, if he gets an easy I, I would be most comfortable if he got an easy lead but I just don't want to I, I, I would hate if there was a little bit even the slightest bit of um um, pressure around the first bend and, you know, jockeys getting a bit egomaniac about who's going to lead and who's not. I hate that. So I, I and especially in such a pressure race as the Haskell, um, I would much rather see him slot in if there's something kicking up and wanting to Yahoo. Who do you think gets the lead here early, Naomi? Do you think Arabian Night can clear? I think they're going to try. I, I think they're going to try. That's kind of what Bob highlighted as well. And look, he's got Johnny Velasquez on board, right? Hall of Fame rider for a reason. He's going to try. And if it doesn't work out, I'm sure he's going to just sit on the shoulder of Go Rocket Ride or whoever ends up on the lead if he doesn't. But he's on the outside. So there's no way anyone's going to end up going around him and pressuring him. I think that's a benefit for him. Bob did say he didn't really like the outside because then you have to come over, which... Yeah, is the case, but I guess the benefit is that you know nobody's going to be breathing down your neck. You can be the one dominating. And I think that as a jockey gives you options, right? You can intimidate a horse on your inside a little bit. Now, look, he's got Mike Smith on Go Rocket Ride. So I think we've got two very experienced Hall of Fame riders here. So I don't think you can intimidate Mike Smith that much. But still, from that kind of tactical point of view, I'd say that's probably what Johnny's going to try and do, is try and come over, try and clear. If it doesn't work, you know, it's horse racing. He'll probably be uh, trying to intimidate Go Rocket Ride or anyone who's on his inside. And I think I it's better. Like it. Johnny Johnny V is probably the bit, one of the best controlling riders, whether that's in the lead or outside lead. Uh, yeah. I think he he controls the situation as good as anyone in the in the in the country. I liken the jockey on the outside most drawn speed horse, almost like the player sitting on the button in poker. Others have to play their hands before it gets to him. So yeah. I think it's actually an enviable spot either trip being possible nick do you agree do you like this draw for arabian night oh sure it's the best draw by far bob's funny right because if he had drawn the one it would have been oh he's got the inside you know we're gonna have to take pressure from the start and if he had the five it would have been oh he's got go <laughs> rocket right outside and right it's big, the best big, draw bigger light, big, bigger light of the newly elected president of the trainers association of the u.s yeah, exactly right yeah, yeah. I'm an, I, I have a communications <laughs> future that but no i mean johnny johnny's the best around when it comes to the front end and or the first over stalking trip so i mean this is this is right in his wheelhouse and you know pace figure wise there are a number of horses in here that have never run nearly as fast as as Arabian Knight did in his second start. 
So, you know, do you, you really think Mikey's going on a suicide mission with Go Rock and Ride? He's probably the fastest horse in the race. Push comes to shove. I don't see extra on Yeho going, given that he raided comfortably off a runoff speed horse last time. I think Arabian Knight gets the lead when they straighten out down the backstretch, and he's going to be awfully tough from there. Let's get to the verdicts on this year's yeah. Haspel. Dallas, you've already tipped your hand. Naomi, how are you going to play this? So I'm either going to be a genius at the end of this, or um, Arabian Night just ran off the screen and I'm sitting here going, well, I tried, right? Somebody um, will be right. That's the good <laughs> what, what, what are, you, you and uh, one of us wins now. I mean, that's the good, 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 good news. So, yeah, I was trying to be clever here. I do very much respect Mage. Just, you know, one of only a handful of horses, Tapa Trice did it too, but Mage, one of only a handful of horses that has run Triple D by our figures, even if he isn't cranked, he's just an incredibly talented horse. So I kind of still think this is his race to lose and we just don't know what we have with arabian night so i'm banking against that by taking a shot using an exacta box using the four the five and the seven uh for quite a bit of money <laughs> hundred dollars exacta box so that's about 600 uh to try and create the value here so if arabian night doesn't run one or two i'm laughing but if he does I was wrong, but this is that guessing game of how quick does a three-year-old develop? How good is this horse really? We don't know. He could indeed be the star of the three-year-old crop. Nick mentioned it hasn't been, there hasn't been like a standout horse yet, but I'm I'm going with, with taking a, a stab in in looking at the market and looking how it's, it's shaping up at present, because I think Arabian Night is the favorite and will continue to take, take all the interest. Nick, let's hear your final answer. Yeah, I hate to to just kind of go with the majority, but it looks like Arabian Night's going to be tough here. This felt like I, I I've been a fan of this horse since Breeders' Cup Day last year, and I I asked on Twitter about a month ago if anybody knew where he was running, and I was quickly told the Haskell, and I I thought to myself, well, if Bob's running this horse in the Haskell off a 180 day layoff, then he's or nearly 180 day layoff. He's going to be ready to go, and these workouts look like they've been. I've not read any workout reports. I've not seen any opinions on how he's been training, but I'm guessing if he's firing off seven eighth breezes every Saturday. He's going to be doing pretty well. So I think he'll be awfully tough to handle. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it all shakes out because one thing we do have in this race is depth. So, you know, whether there is a standout yet, we'll see. I think we'll learn a lot more from this one. That's our thoughts on the big one. We've got plenty of more great content for you. But right now, we're going to go to another word from our sponsor, Monmouth Bets. Monmouth Bets is New Jersey's exclusive home for fixed odds betting on horse racing, including this weekend's bumper Haskell Day card. But it's not just Monmouth Park races you can place fixed odds bets. Tracks are available from the US and international venues. Download the Monmouth Bets app now and receive a free $50 bet once you verify. Fixed odds betting. The odds you bet are the odds you get. Available in New Jersey only. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Monmouth Bets. The only place to bet online fixed odds horse racing in the US. Well, Haskell Day is obviously the big ticket item this weekend. Monmouth Bets is offering fixed odds on multiple venues around the U.S., Canada, Jamaica, even South America. Here are the best betting plays from some of our experts as we go around the grounds. Hey, everybody. Jim Miller here, racing analyst at Hawthorne Racecourse. We're talking about the best fixed odds wagering play for Sunday's card. That's going to come in a race number seven with the one horse, Aviano. This one from the barn of trainer Antonio Mraz. Horse that tends to sit back a little bit early on and come charging at him late. But this is a horse that was also fantastic in New York last year. Looks to get a great pace set up ahead of it. And if you can get that 7-2 to two on Aviano, definitely worth the play. Good luck. Two feature races on the Saturday Century Mile card. Races 7 and 8. Seventh race is the 38th running of the Count Latham. My best bet for that one will be 6-1 for Chep. Taking a big drop in class here for the $50,000 stake race. Was seventh in a $125,000 stake race. And will like the improvement with the extra two furlongs in this one. And with the eighth race, the 62nd running of the Century Mile Handicap, I went with the three mascot sheets. Was wide throughout the race and just got nosed out at the end. Is it going to be as wide? Going to be a lot closer to the pace. And I expect this one in the winner's enclosure. Once again, 6-1 for Chap at race 7 and three mascot sheets in race 8. We're going to the nightcap. I'm not really a fan of betting $1.80 fixed odds price or $1.80 price in any form. 
But Lur of Lucy, number 11, is just clearly the best horse in the race, best post position in the race, quickest horse in the race, looks great at exercise relative to a lot of these, and should have a simple task here. So we will go with a dollar eighty, even though we're not a fan of a dollar eighties, just because she is just the best horse in the race. And sometimes that's all you have to do, bet the best horse in the race, regardless of the price. Race five, I love the one, kid you not. I'm probably gonna do a one six and a one five cold exacta here, but kid you not is the lone speed of the race. Here in US racing, if you're lone speed, it might be tough to catch. This horse has seen better competition at Fairgrounds and Churchill Downs. One nice last time out, about two and a half length winner at odds of five to two. Because of the, the way our odds set up here, I'm expecting about five to two again here today. Raid one action is up next in the form of the United Nations. We're going a mile and three eighths on the turf. Looks pretty competitive at the top of the market. Um, Nick, we'll start with you. Just generally speaking with this race, are you thinking it's you're interested in one at the top of the market? Or are you looking at something at a little bit more of a price? Yeah, no, I think Red Knight is a very clear favorite here. I, I have no uh, no doubt that he's uh, better than these horses. Um, I know Planetario comes in looking particularly sharp off that big win in the San Juan Capistrano. He might actually be a little too long-winded for this race. A mile and three-eighths at, at Monmouth is a quicker, much, much quicker race than a mile and a half at Santa Anita, in my opinion, even though you do literally start going down the hill. Um, and so I, I also think the Red Knight has a little bit more tactical speed. The Man of War, for example, if you use that race as a benchmark for what type of horse Red Knight is, he was within range of the pace to the point where he can stay, you know, close enough to not be too far out of it. And, and I think that'll prove a big advantage. I thought I did not realize first go around how well he ran in the Manhattan. You know, you say he ran fourth beaten four lengths in a turf race. How could he have run that well? That was a race, of course, where the winner won by almost three. I mean, up to the mark, buried the field that day. He essentially lost a, a photo, um, or he he was a length and a quarter behind a photo for second. So he really didn't run poorly at all. And I think he's a horse that, again, distance-wise, he's getting to what he does best. I think class-wise, he's also kind of a, a standout to me. Before we get out of here, I want to show in graphic form the plays that our experts have come up with on, on the show here. And... and uh, let's take a look at that right now. You can see how Naomi and Nick are going to go head to head here and spend some of their money across this uh, loaded Haskell Day card with all these stakes and uh, great betting opportunities from our friends at Monmouth Bets. Uh, MonmouthBets.com. We encourage folks to sign up. There's even a little bonus offer now, Dallas, for new Monmouth Bets uh, uh, signups. How does that work? Very easy, Pete. Just get on, verify your account, and you've got a free $50 bet. So, like, if you can, if you are in New Jersey, whatever you think about fixed odds or whatever, you might as well just grab a $50 free bet and never come back if you don't like it. But uh, give it a try. Look, I mean, it's great fun. I mean, the, the element of fixed odds just puts such a different layer into how you assess racing. Like, you know, we're here talking about the value, the price. And like Naomi was saying, like, looking, looking for, you know, looking for some value in races and all of that. And it just puts such um more it just adds more excitement to it and it just really is the grabbing of people where they really can gravitate towards and get really hardcore racing fans um you know who just love who enjoy betting and enjoy the skill of trying to trying to win on the punt we are just about out of time does anybody have any closing thoughts for our audience before we get out of here Yeah, go sign up at Mammoth Bets, right? Get on, get involved in fixed odds betting. It's a new wave that uh, is ready for you. Get on board, and, and don't forget the app or the uh, the App Store or the Android, whatever you want, whatever you're using to. If you want to use uh, an app rather than the uh, traditional website. Well, like you Lots said, fixed odds allows you to lock in that value. So if you have a strong opinion and you think that the odds actually are, you know, way too high for the chances the horse have, lock it in now because that's where you secure the value and that's obviously something that you can't do with the toad pools when it's commingled but with the fixed odds you can basically do whatever you want and it's locked in 
which is awesome. How does the phrase how does the phrase go, Dallas? The odds you bet are the odds you get. I've said that yeah. once or twice on uh, on We've the, the money. Hey, yeah, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking you you got your normal sign off with uh, may the photos go your way or whatever. <laughs> Something like, hey, that's my line. We can't have no. you stealing. Well, may 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 may, yeah. may everybody get the best odds. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> for Nick Tamro, for Naomi Tucker, for Dallas Bakers, and, and our friends at Monmouth Bets and MonmouthBets.com and the Monmouth Bets app, I'm Peter Thomas Fornatel. May you win all your Haskell Day fixed odds photos. <laughs>